Some of us have heard this, right? We've heard this in a sermon before and we yes and amen it. We might've even clapped, right? But we do not live as if it were true. If you ask this question on a regular basis and prayerfully seek the answer, not only will you flourish as a Christian this next year, not only will you know what you should do in terms of big decisions in your life, but you will grow in spiritual maturity at the same time. I promise you. A lot of us Christians are heading into 2024 and we're gonna make the same mistake that we made in 2023. This is a mistake in terms of vision. And what does the proverb say? When there is no vision, the people perish, right? So here's what I want you to do. I'm gonna share with you my goal for 2024, and I encourage you to join me in this goal for the new year. Now, some of you are cringing because you're thinking, well, wait, is this a resolution? Resolutions never work, Nate. I disagree with that. I think resolutions can be a good thing, and I think that they can work. The bottom line is, it's not about resolutions. It's about developing good habits. And whatever helps us to develop good spiritual habits that will lead to our maturity in the spirit and flourish as Christians in today's culture, then let's do that. Amen? You can call it whatever you want, a cheeseburger and french fries. I'm calling it a goal for the new year. It's fine. So what is the mistake that a lot of us are making? And what is my goal for the new year? First, my name is Nate Sala, and this is Wise Disciple, where we're helping you become the effective Christian that you were meant to be. If this is your very first time here, welcome. I hope this channel blesses you. A lot of great videos for your consideration. Okay, here's the mistake that we make, guys. I make this all the time. Why? Because we're not as intentional as we should be. And so we very often unwittingly slip into this perspective. Now, a number of you are gonna get upset when you hear this, and I wanna encourage you to hear it anyway, because not only is this absolutely true, Understanding this is going to unlock a lot of the scriptural passages for you that you probably missed. Here's the mistake. We think that we are the author of our own story. And here comes the bad news. You ready for this? We are not. Now, don't get mad at me. The Bible teaches this. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4, this is what it says. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Now, Okay, you ready? Here's the verse. Watch this. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So much theology just dripping off this passage. I mean, it's it's amazing. Uh, I just did a reaction to Vodi Bakum preaching from this passage. He did a fantastic job of showcasing how God has redeemed us all. He preached from verse one all the way to Verse 10 there. Love that sermon. You can check that out. I'll provide a link for it in the notes. But guess what? This passage, like all of God's word, is a beautiful shimmering diamond. So if we see it from one angle, we can see the beautiful theological truths about God and his mercy and our deadness and sins and our transformation. But if we shift the diamond ever so slightly, there is more to see that is just as beautiful. And as we shift, check this out, we see, for we are his workmanship, created for good works, which God prepared beforehand. Do you realize what this means, friends? It means that we are not the author of our own story. We are God's story. We are his poema. We are his craftsmanship. That means that God is the author, not us. Now, some of us have heard this, right? We've heard this in a sermon before, and we yes and amen it. We might have even clapped, right? But we do not live as if it were true. Once you let this really sink in, okay, like truly sink in down deep into your bones, you must start wrestling with the $6 million question, okay? It is this very same question that I will be asking myself in 2024. And here is my invitation to you. If you ask this question on a regular basis, and prayerfully seek the answer. Not only will you flourish as a Christian this next year, not only will you know what you should do in terms of big decisions in your life, but you will grow in spiritual maturity at the same time. I promise you, I promise you. Here is the question. What is the story that God is telling through you? 
If God is the author of our story, what is the story that he is telling specifically through your life? Once you see this concept and you start asking that specific question, all of a sudden, all these other passages of Scripture start to unlock and they start to make a lot more sense. Jesus said in John 5, 19, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of his own accord, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, that the Son does likewise. Right? Whatever, whatever the Son sees the Father doing, whatever the story is that the Father is telling, the Son will do it. That's why Jesus says later, not my will, but thy will be done. Amen? Now, some of you might be thinking, well, wait a second, Nate, but that's, this is Jesus, right? I'm, I'm not the God man. And yes, that's true. None of us are, okay? But I think that we can live our lives sensing the hand of God's activity, wherever that may be around us, and then go be a part of that. I think the principle that Jesus teaches us, we can actually live out as well. And when we do that, we let God's story unfold through us. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Watch this, verse 20. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. God communicates through us. That is his desire. He makes his appeal through our very lives, through our very actions and speech. This is God expressing through our individual lives the grand story of redemption that he has been telling since the creation of the world. And this story is told as we recognize that we are God's workmanship and we walk in those good works that he has prepared for us. Here's another one, Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. When you recognize that Christ is living in you, that means that what you do with your life is Christ living through you. Do you see what I mean? This concept is all over the place in the scripture. And when you start praying and asking Christ to live through you moment to moment, which is what it means to live by faith, right? Paul says in Romans 1, the same thing, the righteous shall live by faith, right? That's a quotation from Habakkuk, right? So this is all over the place in the scripture. When you start doing these things, God will tell his story through your life. I got one more for you, um, but this is not an exhaustive list by any stretch. I mean, this is all over the place in the scripture. Colossians 3, verse 23, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord, you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. Okay. Serving what? You are serving not only Christ, but you're serving the story that God is telling through you. Why? Because God is the author of your story. He has things for you to do that he prepared and thought out well in advance. That's Ephesians 2. As Christians, we recognize that the Bible is the story of God's redemption. But as Paul reminds us, our very lives are telling God's story. The fact that he is our author, the author of life, means that our story is written not by ourselves, but by him. And once that sinks in, you got to let this sink in, guys. Don't watch this video and then just forget what I'm talking about. Once that sinks in, what you do this upcoming year, where you go, which job you take, whatever major decision you make should be filtered through the $6 million question. What is the story that God is telling through me? That is the question I'm asking in the new year. And I'd love to find out what that story is in my life, but also in your life. If you already sense what that might be, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to be inspired. I'd love to hear the story that God is telling. If you're still on that journey of discovery, as you continue to ask this question in the new year, here's what I can tell you. Stay close to God's word. Pay close attention to the recurring themes and, and note the application of God's word to your circumstances. Stay close to God in prayer and worship. Write down your prayers. Get, get used to writing a journal, you know, keeping a journal, reflecting on what the Lord is doing around you, okay? Stay close to your brothers and sisters in biblical community. And I promise you, God will reveal the story he's telling through you. Take heart, friends. Our stories are not finished, but we can trust that they have already been written by a great and powerful God who loves you 
and cares for you. I'm going to take a very small mini vacation, uh, but I'll be back in the new year hitting the ground running with more videos for you. Hey, I'm praying for you. I'm so glad that you're on this journey with me. And in the meantime, I will say bye for now.